All right. So the next thing they often ask you about is how to name a sugar. And you're going to hear things like alpha and beta, D and L, and those are going to be the most common parts of the question. So let's start by defining what is the difference between D and L sugars, what is the difference between alpha and beta sugars. First of all, let's talk about D versus L. When we're talking about D versus L, you are always looking at your penultimate OH. So I here have four D pentoses, D, uh, five D pento aldoses, or aldo pentoses. Five carbon sugars that are aldoses because you have CHO groups, and these are four different ones. Now, they are all D sugars, and the way, what they all have in common to make them D sugars is their penultimate OH is on the right. So in a D sugar, the penultimate OH is on the right of the Fisher projection. Okay? And then by extension, that must mean that L sugars, the penultimate, OH is on the left. Okay? Now, you can also tell D versus L when we have the Haworth projections, because remember we have that special rule for our penultimate OH when we draw the, the Haworth. Now, I'll illustrate that a bit better once we actually draw Haworth, so let's start with this question and that'll help Park out our answer. So we have to draw the Haworth of alpha D lysos. So I'm going to look at D lysos, which is this one, and we'll figure out the alpha and the D in a second. We already know this is D lysos as it's drawn, so we're just going to start by drawing any Haworth, the Haworth we typically draw. Namely, it's five carbons, one, two, three, four, five, and we know it's a five-member ring because the oxygen that attaches the CH, attacks the CHO is one, two, three, four, five away. So we're making a five-member ring. So start by just drawing a five-member ring. I like to draw my oxygen in, on the top in the middle, and then I just do that. Okay. Now, we'll worry about the anomeric OH in a second. Let's just number our carbons for now, and worry about two, three, and four's stereochemistry. Okay, so carbon two, had the OH on the left. And if we remember that chart that I erased, but you hopefully have seen from the previous video, if it's on the left, that means it is pointing up, that OH, in the hallway. The second OH is also on the left, so that is also pointing up. And now carbon four is my penultimate carbon, which means the OH follows the opposite rule. If the OH is on the right, the CH2OH is pointing up in the hallway. So the other way you can consider D versus L is in the Haworth projection, D points up. Let's this in this little. So in the Haworth, CH2OH, the penultimate CH2OH, is pointing up. And if it is an L sugar in the Haworth, the CH2OH would point down. So we have the D lysos part down, but what about the alpha part? The alpha part of the name, and the, or if it's, al it's alpha versus beta, the alpha or beta part of the name has to do with two things. The anomeric OH and its position, or its, uh, its up versus down in comparison to the penultimate CH2, or the penultimate carbon CH2OH. So the way you can remember this is whenever you see alpha, <clears throat> whenever you see alpha, think trans. Okay, alpha A for trans. And then beta is equal to cis. Now, what do I mean by that? 
alpha being trans means that the anomeric OH is pointing in the opposite direction of the CH2OH group. And beta being cis means the anomeric OH would be pointing in the same direction as the CH2OH group. So in this case, we want alpha D lysos, which means this CH2OH group we already know is pointing up because it is a D sugar, and that tells us, therefore, that the anomeric OH must be pointing in the opposite direction because alpha is trans, which means that OH would be pointing down. And this is why I was saying in the previous video, we didn't have enough context to say whether the anomeric OH was pointing up or down, and I drew those squiggly lines. But now we're told alpha, so we know this. The alpha and the beta comment will always tell you which position your anomeric OH will be pointing in. So let's do another example. Let's say, let's draw the Haworth of L beta arabinose. So let's write that out. We need to draw the Haworth of beta L arabinose. Okay? So start by looking at what D arabinose looks like. On your, on your exam, if we ever have a question about naming things, we will always give you the sugars that are relevant to solving that naming issue. So here I drew out uh, aldo pentoses, or yeah, pento aldoses, whatever. Um, and sometimes you'll get questions about uh, hexo aldoses, six carbon chains. I just chose the pentoses because there are fewer and so I could fit them on the board. But the process is still the same. Now, because we only ever give you D sugars, you have to remember something for an L sugar. An L sugar, we said before, is where the penultimate OH is on the left. Well, none of these have that OH in that position, which means we have to consider what would this look like if every OH flipped positions, because that is what an L sugar is. It is essentially the, the enantiomer, the mirror image of a D sugar, meaning if I'm going to look at D arabinose and I want to know what does its L sugar variant look like, I have to take this sugar, re completely redraw it with each OH group flipped to the other side. So that means if I want to draw what L arabinose looks like in a Fischer projection, and this should be your first step, draw it in the Fischer projection, well the CHO on top and the CH2OH won't change, but the things in the middle did. Originally the OH on carbon 2 was on the left, which means now it's on the right. The OH on the next carbon down would be on the left because formerly it was on the right. And then the other OH will be on the left as well. So this is the Fischer projection of L arabinose. It's just the mirror image of D arabinose. And now that I have that drawn, I can translate that into the Haworth projection. So again, it's a pentose, which means it's a five-membered ring. And then a number of the carbon that gets attacked, the CHO on top one, a number around to the OH that does the attack, five there. So here's five, one, two, three, and four. Now let's figure out what we need. Let's start with two through three because those aren't anything special. They're neither anomeric nor penultimate. They just follow that first set of rules that we set in the beginning. Meaning carbon two has an OH on the right. OHs that are on the right point down. Carbon 3 has an OH on the left, and that means it points up. Carbon 4 is our penultimate OH, which our carbon 4 has our penultimate OH, which means we're going to draw the CH2OH group. Since this OH is on the left, it's going to point down. CH2OH. Now, so we have the L arabinose part, and now we just have to draw beta. And we said before, beta means cis. Beta means that the two, the anomeric OH and the CH2OH group of your penultimate carbon are pointing in the same direction, which means for this, the OH has to be pointing down. So it matches the CH2OH. And so that would be the Haworth of beta L arabinose. Let's try one more, but let's do from the Haworth to one of these. So I'm going to erase this OH and that OH and that OH. And let's say, I don't know the name. I want you to name this. I'm going to draw an OH pointing up on carbon 1. I'm going to draw an OH pointing down on carbon 2. 
and we'll make this OH points up on carbon 3. Mm, you know what, let's make this point down as well. Okay, so whenever you're going from, whenever you're trying to name a Haworth projection, always draw the Fisher projection first, go backwards from this. So we know it's a one, two, three, four, five membered carbon chain, so I'm gonna just start with this. And I know it's an aldose because carbon one only has an OH, not an OH and a CH2OH on it. So I know it's CHO on top, CH2OH on bottom. And now it's five carbons all together, so one, two, three, four, and five. Now carbon one doesn't have any stereo because it's CHO group, two, three, four. Okay, so let's start with carbon two. Carbon two has the OH pointing down, which means it's on the right. Carbon three has the OH pointing down, so it's on the right as well. And carbon four has the CH2OH group pointing down, which means that OH is on the left. Okay? So this is my Fisher projection of this hollower, but that doesn't tell me the name. It only tells me, uh, the only thing I can tell from the Haworth right now is two things, whether it's beta or alpha, and whether it is um, D or F. We know it is an L sugar because the CH2OH group is pointing down, and you can confirm that here because the OH group on your penultimate is to the left. And we can tell that this is also alpha because the CH2OH group and your anomeric OH are pointing in opposite directions. So for now, all we know about the name is that it is alpha and it is L. But now we have to figure out, well, which of these D, which of these D sugars is it comparable to? So what you're going to do is you're going to have to draw the mirror image again because we gave you a list of D sugars, not L sugars. So the L sugar version of this would be still CHO and CH2OH on their ends, but now it's OH on the left, OH on the left, and OH on the right. Which means this is comparable to d -lysos. So this is a sugar, this Haworth projection is a drawing of alpha L lysos. And that's how you go through these problems, these naming problems.